Now, if anybody has any questions, just let me know, and I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, so first, <laughs> uh, it's new technology. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name is Christophs. Uh, I've written a bunch of things. Um, I do learn the CHS. Who sort of learned the CHS? Yeah, that's like that weird thing. I actually did that. That's that's me. So uh, you can read that right tape now about how you should never ever even see for web apps to me. Uh, I really like those maps. I get them. Uh, I've done KCALDAV, KCGI, KSQL, the new one, KYLAV. I did Lowdown. Uh, does anybody use Lowdown? The Markdown thing? A few people. Um, uh, what's another popular one? Uh, I did, I started Manual, but Ingo has completely taken that over. Um, I don't recognize anything anymore when I look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's totally, everything's totally different. That's great because. Very large parts of the code are clearly still yours. Oh, uh -huh. I was going to say, but now it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a bingo time for that. When you go to man.opensd.org, I think that was also well, one point originally mine, and now I don't recognize it, and it works. Um, Acme Climb also, I wrote that's in OpenBSD base. Uh, if anybody, just kind of on a side note, wants to take over the portable version of that, please let me know, because once it went into OpenBSD base, I immediately lost interest <laughs> in developing anything else for it, because it was already there. Um, so you can talk to me about that later, if you guys want to take that over, it's not difficult. Um, and that's, if, in case you're not aware of that, that's the Let's Encrypt file. And this, all these slides were generated with SPLG, I don't think I use. So, so uh, let's get started. This is about diving. Uh, so before we actually start about the diving things, there are really four things I'm going to talk about. So this is not exclusive to scuba diving. It's about snorkeling, it's about recreational scuba, technical scuba, and free diving. So let's do some show of hands. Who has ever been snorkeling? Let's actually do this a better way. Who has never been snorkeling? All right, okay, that's bad. Um, who has never even gone in the water? <laughs> Somebody started to raise their hand, they didn't. I just like, know who has never showered. Oh, really? So the hand is still down. All right, then. it's going to be that kind of tall. All right, excellent. Um, so okay, so most people have been in the water at least. Have you guys, have any, has anybody taken pictures underwater? Yeah, a little bit, you know. So let's just jump to the other end. Who's a technical diver? You're a technical diver. All right, good. Uh, free diver. Awesome. Okay, we got some free diving. That's that's surprising actually. Um, I thought there would be nobody from free diving. That's good. So I'm going to talk about all of these. Everything you see here is going to apply to them. Um, all the pictures you see are taken. Also, all this is open music, so just letting you know. <laughs> so let's start with snorkeling, and I'm going to take this slow because, again, I don't really know what people's confidences are. If it's boring you, then you can take little naps. Um, in snorkeling, the equipment that we generally use that I'm going to be talking about today would be a camera and a waterproof watch so that you can take pictures of what you see because what's the point if it's not on Instagram or whatever? Um, and the waterproof watch is just so you don't end up getting a sunburn too badly. Uh, what is snorkeling? It's basically anything in the water where you're on the surface. That's everything. You get in the water, you're swimming, you're basically snorkeling but doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm not going to really talk about the pictures themselves and what's in them, except maybe afterward, but if you have a question about any particular thing you see, then just don't hesitate to ask. Um, recreational scuba. I think this is what most people will have done if you've done some sort of scuba. Recreational scuba is basically you go out and you take a little training course and get in the water. It's huge amounts of fun. If you haven't done it, absolutely do it. It's really just a load of fun. And you can do it anywhere. The colder it is, the more miserable you'll be. So don't do it in a cold place unless you never want to dive again. Um, so for the usual recreational scuba, what you're going to have is just a camera, usually, because people love to take pictures. And these usually go down to like 30 or 40 meters. Um, you might have a dive computer, but not so often. I don't think they teach how to use those in most uh, recreational schools. So, 
again, a dive computer and the cameras. The cameras are really important here. I'm going to talk a lot about photography. Um, technical scuba, we only have one person here. I will talk about it because it's cooler than recreational scuba. The pictures are more awesome uh, because you have more time to focus, essentially. That's really the only reason. And you can go deeper. Um, my max depth is like 45 meters, I think, but you can go you know, arbitrarily deep. That's where all the real actual technology, you live with computers when you're doing technical diving. And if you do it wrong, you'll die. It's not a joke. Uh, there are acquaintances of mine who have died because they did not use their technical computers properly. Um, and free diving is the last one. That's the one I like the most and I do the most. Uh, for the equipment there, you don't really need anything at all. In fact, it's better if you don't have it. But again, you probably want a camera. And usually people have a dive computer as well. That's a particular kind of dive computer uh, to keep track of how deep they're going because it's hard to tell a lot of times. So that's when I'm talking about diving now, you guys know it's everything in the water except for swimming. And I don't know why you do that. So uh, I understand there are a lot of people here. You can raise their hands. Yeah, so I know that to you, diving is really kind of this thing that you know may seem scary, so I'm going to relate now with, with what's more commonly used for open BSD. So snorkeling is like hiking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wooded pastures, you know, uh, mosquitoes, stuff like that. Uh, oh, you can't see the next button. Um, scroll down, it's probably the one should show up. Use the two. Um, yeah, so, so hiking, I actually had to, learn, had to look up this terminology because I fundamentally have no idea. Okay, so recreational scuba is trekking. And apparently trekking and hiking are different. Did you guys know that? I did not. Yeah, the trek, so hiking is easy and trekking is hard. Right. So that's kind of how I try to put things. So if you're going recreational scuba, it's equivalent to going trekking. Because you might actually need to do some scrambling on the rocks or something like this. And you might die, you have a hard time doing it, but you can die in um, trekking. You know, you fall over particularly badly, or you get bitten by a rattlesnake, or have a spousal argument or something. Um, and this is, kind of, you know, <laughs> this is for me trekking, you know, rocks. There's more rocks. So now we'll talk about technical scuba. And that's where you're up there, and you will die if you do it wrong. Um, of course, then it's a lot more fun. Uh, who's done that, like, mountaineering? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. There's no irritated bears on the glacier. Irritated bears. <laughs> irritated bears. You just need to be a bigger bear. Well, <laughs> some of us are challenged by the <laughs> mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, no, <laughs> you weren't actually supposed to read that. <laughs> So now we have rock climbing is like pretty I kind of ran out of things to make similar. So you'll forgive me if it doesn't really work, but I needed a, a theme, okay? So bear with me. Free diving is like rock climbing. Um, except I guess in rock climbing you have a lot more <laughs> equipment and free diving you're not supposed to have equipment. But you get the point. It's more you out there. Um, free climbing. Yeah. Tree climbing. Free climbing. Free climbing. Free, oh yeah, solo. No, free free solo. solo, right. Yeah, yeah then you that's, 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 uh, I mean, I'm going to click that because I get, I get palms sweaty when I think about that. So, of course, the question is why are we here? Where does coffee fit into all this? All right? um, besides being a fish. So. <laughs> so, all the coming slides are now going to focus on technology and not so much diving, but there will be pictures and videos for your uh, you know, media enjoyment. Okay, so this is basically what my talk is going to be about. So now that the introductions are finished, uh, we have a lot of camera things. I mean, every single one of the activities I've just talked about, you probably are going to bring a camera, or you might as well go hiking. You know, you need to take pictures of things. That's just great. It's a lot of fun. And it's actually quite hard, as we get to later. The dark computer is another really critical element. Not so much if you're snorkeling, because you're not going down, so, so really all you need to worry about is how long you've been out there, so you don't overstay your visit. Uh, but when you're a recreational scuba, you might want one that tells you your depth. It tells you that you must go up now. If you're technical diving, you absolutely need one for your ego stops. And if you're free diving, you usually need one to see, for example, your depth. 
and to see how long you should rest on the surface between valves. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. And it turns out, so that's the hardware that we really care about. There's, there's some other hardware, but we don't directly interface with it. For example, if you're using rebreathers, they're just a big computer. But we don't deal directly with that computer. Um, if you have like wireless gauges and all this stuff, then that's technically a computer as well, but we don't interface directly with it. It's through the dark computer. So those are the components that we care about in terms of hardware. But the software, of course, is what uh, we care about on OpenBSD, and that's dive analysis, uh, image browsing, video editing, dive planning, image editing, and video browsing. So basically everything related to photography, videography, and the dive planning stuff, which we don't know much about, but I'll get to. Uh, and if there's anything else you can think of, by the way, just, again, raise your hand. So I'm going to talk now about the data itself, meaning the camera and the dive computer. So this is kind of normal-ish gear that somebody who does all these activities might have. Uh, we've got our uh, OpenBSD running laptop in the background. Um, it's going to be connected to some backup uh, hard drives right here because if you're storing images or videos, it's going to be gigabytes and gigabytes. And if you're me and you are stupid when you've got your computer, it only has like 250 gigabytes and you need a few terabytes. So I'm not going to talk about this at all, but you usually are going to have some sort of other storage. These are actually the ones that I use. And it's just ratified uh, USB connected hard drives. They will break a lot. Um, this is my dive computer or one of them. You have a stick. Go close, I do that. Go close, okay, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going farther away from the image, if you want to be specific, right? So this is one of the... You know, the yellow sign in Romanian says, open this and take the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we have a better solution than the electrifying myself. Or electrocuting. Electrocuting. Electrocuting myself. Never mind, I have my backup. <laughs> <laughs> this is my backup device. This is that computer right here. And I didn't bring it with me, but it just tells you all sorts of stuff. And if you want to know what stuff that is, you can ask me later. Um, this will connect, this is a wireless tank gauge, so it tells you how much air is in your tank, amongst other things. That connects to this, so we don't directly deal with this. The camera is the biggest thing. Oh, excellent, thank you. This is a very nice thing, because it doubles as a wake up tool. So I need to go on so the camera is the biggest uh, sink of your money, as well as where data is coming from. Uh, there's actually not a camera in here, as you can see, it's because it's taking a picture of so. uh, Then you have, sometimes you have different video things, uh, like a GoPro, and then you might have different dive computers as well, uh, one of them is right here. Uh, I'll use different dive computers for free diving and for scuba diving because of the form factor on a small video. Um, and of course, the computer itself can be really anything. Probably use the. What's that? Use the laser pointer setup. Oh no, this is much more tactile. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I feel much more. So, what's running on the dark, dark computer? Or something? The so, that's actually a good question. Uh, most of them are totally proprietary stuff. Uh, me, probably nails or something, right? But there are some that are open source. So, the, there's one dark computer company called HW, Heinrich Weichmann that actually has an open source dive computer that they've been putting out there. It's called the OSTT. So uh, I'll talk actually about that later because I think it's a really good thing. <laughs> uh, but the technologies that we're talking about here, are primarily everything is USB. So your camera will often connect with USB, the dive computers will connect with USB, and they use a lot of underlying technologies like FTPI, FTDI. Um, MTP is a protocol, it's not uh, a link layer thing. Um, and usually anything related to USB works just fine, uh, with some exceptions. Uh, the GoPro kind of works. I don't know where the error is yet, because I just tried it before this conference, just so I can mention it. Um, there are older models that do serial connections, I've never used them before. Uh, infrared, I had a talk with somebody on the, the uh, BSD social media thing about that they have a, an infrared dive computer. Uh, and they said it didn't work, but it was the infrared part, not the dive computer part. Uh, Wi-Fi. So there's a surprising number of cameras that are like higher-end cameras that have a little Wi-Fi access point inside of them. And you connect to that, 
And then, of course, it's useless because you have to use some sort of per company REST API to get the information, and it's different per company. So you can't use this, um, you just have to know what the API is. <laughs> that sounds like mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, so Wi-Fi is something that's real, but I think that people are moving away from this because having a whole access point in your camera is not really what they want. Um, SD card, I think that just works on most computers. I've been using SD cards for a long time. You just plug them into your laptop and you can put things off them. And unfortunately, this is the big problem of Bluetooth. So a lot of both new cameras and dark computers only use Bluetooth, just to piss me off and convince. Well, that's what it's for. Yeah. The anger is growing. Yes, that's good. The anger is growing. Maintainer. Yeah. Yes. Maintainer. That implies it exists. Use your yeah. anger. Yeah, well, <laughs> first I write it, and then I have to maintain it. Right? Okay. It's a two part process. Very simple. Yes, I know it's in Arabic. I have looked at it in my food. Well, no, that, that should not be looked at because that was done. Wrong. Uh, That's why it went away. Well, uh, I looked at that part and I felt wrong looking at it. <laughs> so, Bluetooth is a trend. There's a solution, but I'm going to be kind of chastised for talking about it. Uh, basically, it's use another computer and then phone things over. Um, but, you know, in practice, if you want to use OpenBSD or non Bluetooth low, it's just low energy, is it BLA? Yeah. Uh, which is funny because if you pronounce it in Russian, it means something very different. Um, yeah, they, uh, you, know, you need an intermediary, and I'll talk about that as well. Okay. <laughs> Almost. There we go. Yes, all right. So, in terms of the equipment I just mentioned, one of them is Bluetooth only. The camera is USB. The uh, GoPro is USB. The older dark computer is USB. So, we're in pretty good shape. Um, so this is how things look when they're connected. And this laptop is the one that's running that, just in case you want proof that I actually do do this and it's not all the fun. So uh, I actually use an Android phone to connect to the Bluetooth thing, and then I will I will mention this later, uh, kind of indirectly get it into gear. This connects directly into the USB, and then I have the camera and the GoPro. So everything works. It's pretty, it's pretty great. <coughs> This is how it looks. Um, so of course I have my laptop and it connects to the camera, the video. Uh, my backup gauge is the little uh, dark computer. Uh, these are generally over USB. And I have a dotted line because the video, the GoPro doesn't really connect. There are some things that are missing with it. I'm not sure what's wrong yet though. Um, the dark computer uses BLE. So I go through an Android mobile and then I interface with some cloud system. And I'll get to that um, later. So this is how all the data moves throughout this system we're talking about. It's all very standard stuff. And again, as you see, it should work on. Previously, it has Bluetooth. Yes? Does it? And then yes. BSD? Yes. And then BSD. OK. So you know, these should actually just work out of the box. Um, so this is the more fun part, because now we can look at pictures again. Uh, uh, now we're going to talk about the actual programs that are on OpenBSD. And, um, this is the part where I can get angry because some of them just don't work and it annoys me so much. So the camera part, so who does photography in general, actually? There's a fair number of people, right? I see a lot of nice pictures by BSD people uh, here and there. So I know that, that there are photographers and I'm sure that everybody has their own workflow. I'm not particularly happy with mine, but I do use it. Uh, okay, so. Instead of photographers, who actually does use their laptop for any photography whatsoever? Even if it's just for fun. Fun stuff. Selfies. <laughs> What's that? Selfies. Yeah, for, for selfies and for unmentionable pictures. <laughs> <laughs> those are only on the cloud, right? We don't put those on a laptop. <laughs> so we, we have a fair number of people who, who work with that. And I'm sure, uh, for example, how many use uh, image processing to take out unsightly blemishes and Stuff like that. All right, so you know a little bit of. Do you mostly use GIMP? 
So this is actually the same picture. It's not taken with a stroll or anything. It's literally just the same after I've done color correction and before. So, you know, color correction becomes everything you do. Uh, you get a lot of, if you've taken a few dozen pictures uh, underwater and you come out to do post-processing and editing, you're not gonna do any filtering whatsoever because all you're gonna be doing is color correction. That's all you have time for. Go ahead. Do you ever like, put like, bring something white which is just to kind of take a test for us so you uh, roughly know where your white balance is? Yes, yeah, so I will, if I'm doing a longer dive, I have a little slate that has white and I will take a picture of it and so I can, I can manually adjust for it. But generally you just know what, the, what it is supposed to look like so you can adjust for it properly. Um, but most of the time I'm diving with strobes, so I don't, you know, this is, these are not with strobes in this dive, uh, it was high current, and I don't even think I have them at that point. Uh, my knowledge of a photographer is evolving over time, uh, so that's also why I don't have, I have more recent photos with these. The more they go back in time, the more green and blue they are. And, and it's funny, we have a website, all these come from it, actually. Uh, and when I start to look historically at the dives, it's just snapshots of the a few pictures from each dive. It's like nice colors, nice colors, green, blue, 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 <laughs> blue. Um, it shouldn't take away the fun of it. I mean, you're having great fun anyway. But the pictures later in life, you're going to keep yourself. So if you go to a nice place and you're going to take pictures in the water, do it in raw mode, even if you're not going to use those files. Trust me on this. All right, um, this is the thing I'm most angry about. Shot well, I don't like it. It crashes all the time. But I simply do not know of anything else as, as convenient as this. So we're talking right now about, about photo management. So that's, who, who does photo management? You've got a few thousand photos, you just dump them in a file directory, or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nature food, star food. Yeah. Or, How do you look at them? Eyegal. Eyegal. Eyegal, pearl scripts, shit. Generally, eyegal. Yeah. Alright. Um, so, I, the only ones I really knew of were GEQ. GEQ. Somebody pronounce it for me, please. GEQ, I don't know. Yeah, GEQ. That sounds much better. Alright, so. They're basically um, specialized browsers that just show you the images. But I guess you could use <coughs> any older you know, system for doing it. Now, why do I use Shotwell? I don't really know. I think I just looked for something that was there. And um, if you're going to write a nice graphical program, it's a GTK one. Please do not do it in a language that compiles into C, which is what they do. This is not written in C, it's written in Bala. Who knows Bala? Do you know Bala? I know Bala! <laughs> <laughs> so you're part of the conspiracy. No, no, no. <laughs> this thing crashed all time. I can't fix it because it's not in C, but it is in C. I it comes out of in C. I yes. think that known people are trying to write it, uh, like known pictures or something. And something was shot there, or I think there was. Uh, because shot there and GT are probably not maintained very well. Well, it's, it's a fine, or, I mean, it's, it does what it's supposed to do. It shows me all the pictures, and I can scroll down, I double click on it, it shows a big version. I can do some simple editing, which I wouldn't do. Uh, and I can give you for that. What's that? Switch to give you, Digicam works great. Yeah, Digicam. So Digicam is, is another one of the options that I mentioned as well, Digicam. Dog table is probably what I'm going to use, um, because of the raw editing. But anyway, so there are a lot of options, and that's actually one of the great things about any of the DSDs is that I can simply sit there and try Dark Table, I can try GP, I can try Digicam, I can do all of that, and you know, all I have to do is package add it. So I'm really spoiled by this. Yeah. And decide all suck. What's that? And then decide all suck. Well, I'm going to find one that doesn't, that sucks less. <laughs> Not GP because it suck less, which is something else, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also keep in mind, I have like 20,000 or 10, so there are a lot of pictures in there, so... I would I guess, not use dark table. Yeah, you would not use dark table. It would just go crash. Wow, okay. Then. I, I did start writing my own at one point, and then I realized I should never do that. It's much more fun, because then I want to do everything. Never mind. So what I'm saying is that uh, it crashes, written in Bala, they're all alternatives, and not to be afraid to use them. Um, why do I use this? Because I use it already. 
And you know how it goes, right? You get into the groove and then it doesn't change. So the raw editing is, is a much, is actually, I'm not sure if it's more important, but it's certainly up there, because I use raw editing all the time. There are also a lot of options for raw editing. There's a dark table, UF raw, which is what I use, raw therapy. So it's great. I mean, for photographers, I don't understand why there aren't more of them on OpenBSD, because all the tools are there. They might all suck, but that's not what we need for. So there are a lot of options for us. Um, I use UF raw because I use UF raw. I don't really have a reason for it. And again, I think it's unmaintained, so I'm probably going to move to something else. Uh, one of the big problems with not maintaining raw editors is they all have a lens database that has the properties of your lenses. So if you upgrade to a new camera and the uh, software is old, it will not have your lens in its database. So stuff like that is important. Yes? Do you just need an update to the port, or is it... No, the whole port, the whole system is... The upstream... Yeah, I would, I would update the port, that's no problem. Okay. But the upstream is, it dies after a while. So this is why I'm probably not going to use for all, and don't suggest other people to use it. So I will probably be switching to dark table, and then exporting the shop and hating it the whole time. <laughs> uh, so this is the fun part, is, is doing something, right? So we don't want to use programs that are already out there, of course we want to write our own, because the best programs are those that we write, because when they fail, we have nobody to blend it out so, uh, And you have so many different tools to write your own things, and it's so much fun to use them. Uh, for example, libgphoto2, lets you access cameras themselves. And in fact, most of these programs use libgphoto or gphoto to actually talk to your camera itself. Uh, LibRaw allows you to access the raw files themselves. Uh, there's LensFun, which is awesome because it lets you work with the lenses you have. You have to adjust for the actual, so when you get things out in raw mode, they're not adjusted for your lens, so everything looks weird. You actually have to do distortion uh, out of that. So your camera will do that when it makes JPEGs. Or when it gives you the raw, it makes pictures of it and sell it. Working with metadata is a lot of fun. Uh, so what can you do with this? Uh, an example is, I mean, the website we have, it's basically SPLG, which is a static raw generator, and a bunch of static shell scripts. And it just comes <laughs> through files that I say I want to export, and I can give them captions and everything, and it dumps them into a place, and then we pop them. So, it uses image magic, it uses SPLG, so you can pull these tools together and have a lot of fun. And uh, of course that's what we want to do. So there are a lot of things to do there, and I'm going to talk about other things that you can develop for. Okay. Uh, video is the other thing. So let's talk, who does video? I'm not shooting now though, there's no video. So there are a few, how about casual video? We do have video. Um, I, when I say who does video, I don't mean professionally because I wouldn't even know what to ask at that point. I just mean who takes videos and puts them on the computer. And what do you guys use? Do you edit your videos? No. Camtasia, I've got it, sorry. What's that? Camtasia, it's a studio. It's very easy. Oh, virtual double is actually not too bad. On OpenBSD, I mean. Or on, on like a free. Oh, open okay. Virtual though. Open shot? Yeah, open shot. Uh, the one, the port on preview thing needs to be updated. So All right. So the, the, well, the, the one I'll talk about is K K D M I or K D E M I. I don't know how to pronounce that. F F M T E G. So F M T E G. I won't talk about because I do use it as well. Um, so again, for organizing, it's a, it's the same question. I mean, I'll end up using just directories, <coughs> and I, I like to get a place to come with shot well. And as we'll see, it's a terrible idea. I'm angry about that. Uh, for the actual video editing, I don't really know what I'm doing. I like to just kind of put things together and splice, and I use KD and Live for that. Uh, color correction is another thing that obviously you need to do, even with your movies. Um, so, um, on OpenBSD, of course, we have KD and Live. It's an older version. So, one of the problems with right at least in 6.3 is that some of the newer color correction stuff is missing because it's a slightly older version, but uh, this, you know, this goes away as things get uh, edited. But it still works for me because I'm just basically pasting things together. I use a lot of work with strokes already, so the light is not such a big deal. Um, it has crashed for me, but it's not that common, and I'm surprised by this. And by now, when a graphical program does not crash all the time, I'm really happy. And it doesn't crash all the time, so I'm pretty happy. 
Uh, I was actually able to make the videos that you see here, so it didn't crash all the time. I don't really understand what I'm doing, but you know, it's, it, this is definitely a work in progress. I'm actually having a lot of fun with uh, with using it. I'm told that Kden Live is a pain in the ass for people who do actual video editing. They say it's cumbersome and, and so on and so forth. But if you never use anything else, you know, it's good enough. Uh, and for me, that is good enough. Uh, there's an alternative, it's called Lives, I think. And I did try to use it a year or so ago, and it just crashed immediately. So I have no idea. Has anybody used Lives? No, I, I, no. I tried it, just kicked out. <laughs> uh, it's like an existential. All of your movies are the same. This is why Everybody I will die. This is why I'm <laughs> yeah, so, um. <laughs> you crashed. Oh, no, I didn't crash. There we go. Yes. So, development is fun. So, can you, like, right click on this? Right click on it, and click play when, when you right click. Yeah. It doesn't auto start. It starts. Oh, okay. So, uh, actually, unfortunately, it's because it's not a very good resolution, you can't see it. So, speaking of FFmpeg, I was able to connect FFmpeg and my dive computer to extract at a given time offset what depth I'm at, and actually put it in the top right here. So we can see that I'm in it and it's just, I should have made it a bigger pump. It's about 20 seconds in, I'm at 11 meters, and you can see me going into the shipwreck. This is on free dive, and I'm right near where we live actually. And it's a little bright in here. But you can do this, it's a lot of fun. So using command line tools, uh, it's very straightforward. Um, FFmpeg has an enormous user manual, so you can read all about how to add filters to it. And you can do also things like that. So it's just a matter of exporting the data from that computer. And I use my own program for that. Or you can use several others that are out there uh, into a CSV or some sort of table. Uh, extract the, uh, the samples. So I say after five seconds, I'm at this step. After 20 seconds, I'm at this step. And then tell FFmpeg I want to take and correlate the offset in time and write it in the top end window. So now I can always see when I'm showing a video how deep I am at that moment, and how long have we been down there. Uh, this is going to go on for a while, so yeah, they're long dives, which is a long way deep. But uh, so you can have a lot of fun with this. And the other tools that are available, again, if you go to two, can give you access to the camera itself. Um, these are saddle green, by the way. Uh, there's really not much out there. This is shot in Malta. It's called the HMS Maioli. We were in Malta a few years ago, right? Did anybody go scuba diving? Weren't you at the Western Dragonara? Was that the name of the hotel? You guys remember the name of the hotel? <laughs> there's a dive center right there. It's this one, actually. So this is, we go there all the time. There's a car there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I didn't, apparently there's just a car, right? Yeah. And it's not, it wasn't great visibility that day, but I was just testing out again the script. So there are a lot of tools. We have Live AD Codec, which is big. There's MJPEG Tools, which is another big program that you can use on the command line. And then, of course, FFmpeg is the biggie out there. And it works great. I mean, you can do all sorts of fun things. You can do filtering. It's got a whole language for it. So um, I had a lot of fun learning how to use that. It was really, really exciting. Let's go back down. And So the last part is about dive computers themselves. Who's using a dive computer? Antoine, you're pretty diving without a dive computer. Yeah. So you were like a laptop. So we have a little bit. We have some to be on myself. Um, this is necessary if you're technical diving, you'll dive with, you'll die, not dive, you will die and die without it. Um, because it tells you your decompression source. Um, but for recreational diving, it's also you might die because it tells you how deep you can be and how long you can be down there for. Again, before you die. Uh, for free diving, it's useful to say that you're still going down and you're probably going to die. Uh, and then you've been down too long and you're going to die. <laughs> um, and there's a program that I recently ported with a lot of help from, from Ingo actually, 
called Subsurface, which is traditionally very Linux and Mac oriented. Now it runs on OpenBSD. Uh, and so really, um, it was developed by. <laughs> you guys recognize this person? Yes, it's a Linux in a dry suit. <laughs> so it's developed by Linus Torvalds and Dirk Pondel. Uh, and they, I interviewed them for uh, this website <coughs> about subsurface the program. So if you guys want to read about how it was developed, you got this sort of Linus Torvalds. You guys know who he is, right? It's the other theater around. <laughs> and then uh, Jeff Dyson is one of the guys who invented the dark computer. And these people are actually pretty important to me because without them, we would not have an open source ecosystem at all for Dive. Because there would be no Dive computers that would be accessible. So this guy pretty much single-handedly made it possible for us to interact with all of the Dive computers out there. I mean, I think actually all of them. As long as they use USB. As long as they use what? USB. Yeah, well, no, he does, he has, they also do uh, Bluetooth, I don't know if yeah. And serial as well, I mean, I think some of the older will actually use a serial cable. Uh, but mostly, yeah, it's just USB. Uh, but he just, he does this. <laughs> He's a nice guy too. Uh, and if you want to do development, they have man pages now as well, because I worked with them to do those a while ago. So you can write, you know, your own software to interact with the Dark Computer. Um, you can now use Subsurface, which is a dive planner and analysis tool I'll talk about at the moment, on OpenBSD now as well as in ports. So uh, all the tools are there. Um, uh, dive planning is necessary because, again, if you don't plan your dives out carefully, all sorts of things can go wrong that result in great, great quality harm. Um, so this is planning out a dive itself, and it basically says, what tanks do you have? How deep can you go? What's the gas mixture you're going to use and stuff? So you do this before you're doing a technical dive. If you're doing recreational diving, you'll never do this ever. Uh, but if you're a tech diver, who's a tech diver? You're a tech diver. You need to do that plan always. Um, so you can't, you can't shirk on this. You need to do it. And they have a full dive plan in there. It's developed also now by a physicist who works with Linus and Dirk, actually doing all the algorithms for it. So it's, it's very cool stuff. Uh, a lot of mathematics, um, pretty advanced things in there. And again, all you have to do is package up subsurface, and you can run it and see what's on there. It plots everything for you. Uh, it's a very, very nice piece of software. And one thing that I really like about this is that every other alternative you have to pay for. That's it. This is all there is. So everything else out there is some sort of closed source mystery meat. And they really just went along, and all of a sudden now all of us can do it for free. Um, there, it is possible to take a lot of the code interior to subservice and break it out in libraries as well, in case you actually want to write decompression algorithms. Okay. I mean, that sounds interesting. Sorry, I'm... But more likely, you're just going to want to look at your drives and reminisce. Yeah? No. Oh, five minutes. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good, because we'll write in the end of um, so, uh, time analysis is just looking over your dives. It's more useful for free diving, actually, because in free diving, it's more um, about your body and what it can handle, so you, over time, you really learn to recognize patterns. For actual recreational diving, it, it's useless unless you want to look back and say, oh, remember that time? Dippy <laughs> 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 doo. These are all real dives, I might add. Uh, I don't know if that's really important. Yeah. So with uh, all the equipment you saw earlier, and several others. Um, I do use all these a lot myself, which is why I bought them in the first place. So, and this has never crashed. So all you need to do to have big laughable programs that don't crash is download this small box, right? <laughs> 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 So in terms of development, again, here's the fun part, because here's where you can use underlying libraries, not depend upon somebody else's graphical tools. Um, when I first started doing uh, a lot of work with my dive computers, I talked to Jeff Dryson about the dive computer, wrote some manpage for it to understand it, and wrote my own program, uh, because subservice wasn't ported yet, <laughs> to actually work with the dive computer, export things, plot them, and graph them. And you can do all sorts of fun things. Uh, for example, if you're a free diver, What's really important is to know how much you're resting between dives. It's really important, because if you don't rest much, 
you literally can't go down very long after that. So it's important to optimize for how long you're descending over how much you're resting. And this is only important if you start doing three and four minute dives, because again, it's very unsafe to not wait on that. So uh, one of the things I wrote was the ability to do a scatter plot of my resting time with my diving time to make sure I'm following a rule where I'm resting twice as long as my dives. So I can always look back and say, good, I was right along the point where I'm resting twice as long as my dives. So here's a dive sequence where I'm doing about almost three minutes. And each time I'm resting for twice as long beforehand. And you know, so you can play with this. You know, the manual pages are out there. Um, you've got all the libraries there, just install them and, and have fun with it. Um, I don't like the big graphical program, so I'll use like graph. Who's used graph before? This is for for uh, Roth, Trop, Roth. There's an actual program that lets you do graphing or graph. It's pretty cool. Uh, and you know, this is one of the results for that. So here's my thank you for, um, for the photo credits and all this. It was Amy, uh, Hark over there took a lot of pictures as well. Our friend uh, who works at that was uh, Lee, took a lot of them too. Um, what we saw, we saw humpback whales, green sea turtles, hawkbill turtles, southern stingrays, nurse sharks, reef manta rays, and pulling rouses. Um, with the shipwrecks we saw were the HMS Maori, which is great, I love that wreck. Uh, Tugboat 2, which is boring. Uh, the XUSS Kittywake, which is a really famous wreck from the Cayman Islands. Um, and the Rosie, which is in Malta as well. Most of the pictures were taken in Malta, um, which is where we did the Grand Cayman Islands, Raja Alpaca, Indonesia, and Tonga, which is where the whales are. That is from there. Last slide. So, the big question, of course, can you hover over this? Right click. Right click. Right click. Yes. It's, of course, where's the puppy? In the oh, there are two puppies actually. There's a couple. Um, so one of the questions I asked Theo is: it a puffer fish or a porcupine fish? You got angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is what they look like. You're not supposed to make them inflate. That's not very kind. <laughs> um, but they're down there and. They're